Well, welcome back to Citizen Power Breakfast. Uh, on this morning's interview, we have uh, Professor Peter Kadwanja in studio. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Of course, we would like to discuss the ICC cases. Uh, now, Kenya has engaged in a very vigorous campaign with ICC member states at the Assembly of State Parties uh, in which they are trying to propose an amendment to shield sitting heads of state uh, from prosecution while in trial. So I'd like to begin um, by first of all discussing this vote is happening on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. In your opinion, what is the likelihood of this amendment being approved? I, I, I think it is going to be opposed by uh, major European powers. Uh, if you've already read the, the wires and the papers, <coughs> you'll find that Germany, I think France and others are saying that it is possible to uh, listen and address uh, to and listen and address uh, African grievances without necessarily amending the Rome Statutes. So there is already resistance to the amendment of the Rome Statutes. Uh, what Kenya and Africa, uh, meaning African Union, are asking for is basically a major transformation of the ICC which means that uh, you remu remove the immunity uh, clause or rather the clause that takes away the immunity of heads of state and basically levels everyone uh, who appears before the court. <coughs> I think the, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's going to be resisted uh, by the media, particularly the European powers. Remember, it is also that clause of the immunity of the heads of state that has ensured that America, Russia, India, China, and major world powers are not in the ICC because they don't want to subject their heads of state to non-immunity. Uh, so I think it has been an ideological issue from the outset. Uh, it will continue to be, and I don't think that uh, it's going to be uh, passed. Uh, that's one reason. The second reason, of course, is that um, it, it, it appears that it came as a second thought. Uh, for Kenya and Africa, mm. particularly when it became uh, very clear that the UN initiative uh, to get the deferral for Kenya was not going to work. Therefore, it was submitted uh, outside the time limit that is required, which is three, exactly. mon three months. And uh, therefore, there is discussion about uh, considering that issue uh, with in a special session of ASP. Uh, when that comes. Uh, whether that happens is another matter, but the, as it stands now, uh, it might be said that it is out of time or that it was submitted mm -hmm. with, with, I mean, outside the, the prescribed uh, time. And it's not just that mm -hmm. um, proposal or mm -hmm. amendment, shall I say, there's also this proposal to amend Article 63, mm -hmm. uh, which, which states that a person must be physically present, mm -hmm. and of course to amend that so that um, who can uh, attend trial via video link. So considering what you've just said in terms of the time limit, these proposals should have been submitted three months before the meeting and they have been done in fact three weeks before. So what are the, what are the possibilities of these being considered in light of the time frame? Well, well let's, let's see, first of all say that uh, the Kenyan case is a very special case. Uh, remember, it is taking place against resistance by civil society organizations, uh, major powers globally, but on the, uh, at the same time, it is supported by major powers internationally, China, Russia, uh, the entire of uh, Africa, f which are 55 countries. It is also supported by a major Asian bloc. Small country and, uh, and also some Latin American state, although Kenya has not done a major job, uh, campaign work in Latin, that Latin America. Uh, the, the, the main issue uh, here is, <coughs> is, is basically that uh, uh, even though K I mean K K Kenya may not get what it is get, it has managed to turn this issue into a high political issue. So it, the consideration for changes that might be made uh, the concessions that the, the world might make uh, will, will just be for the purpose of, uh, you know, uh, not ameliorating Kenya or responding to Kenya, but basically uh, healing the global community. Uh, the Kenyan case has really caused ruptures, and there's no doubt about it. 
uh, the already as we speak there is a major confrontation between the United uh, the, the, the United Nations Security Council and the African Union and I can tell you by January February the kind of rhetoric you're going to find uh, in Addis Ababa is going to be uh, worrying uh, because basically uh, they voted out an African uh, Union v v uh, vote. That was not a Kenyan vote. It was an African Union vote. And it was a basically a humble request. Remember, they sent a, a high level uh, you know, team, or what they call the contact group of five, head le led by the chairman of the African Union, who is the president uh, of, of a state. So it, it was a very high powered uh, kind of a campaign. Um, Within that context, therefore, we, we expect some cosmetic changes within <coughs> the Rome statutes, whether it's within the prescribed law or not, but some changes are going to occur. One of the changes you, you might uh, find being pushed uh, is this one of uh, the, 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 the accused in Kenya, basically not by being allowed not to, att to attend physically. There is another reason for that. The reason is that the argument that was put in the Security Council for Kenya uh, to be given a deferral was a peace and security argument. Yeah. It was not a justice mm -hmm. argument. Uh, and it is very, very clear from Westgate, uh, from the ongoing threats, even not to Kenya alone, even to the neighbors, uh, even uh, within, like now, the refugees are supposed to go back to, to Somalia. Why can't they go back? If they can't go back immediately, so you're saying Somalia is a threat. And Kenya is not just a country that is threatened internally, but it's a country that has one of the largest forces in, in, inside Somalia. And here you want to nip the head of the, the commander in chief of those armed forces in Somalia. So the peace and security argument has merits. Uh, and and in, in that case, uh, Kenya, uh, some the whole idea of uh, the president and the deputy president appearing at the ICC is going to be uh, a little bit uh, uh, difficult. So do you why, think why, why was there a, um, a clash between Kenya and Britain about that uh, move to have the video, the video link, interviews? Yes. And, and apparently because the Kenya had already asked for that. Mm, I, I don't think because Kenya was asking for more, for that, more than that. And uh, I think the, uh, let's admit that uh, Kenya believes very strongly uh, if you listen to the Jubilee, uh, you know, uh, spokespersons and others, they b believe very strongly that they are at the Hague, or they failed at the UN Security Council, and they have, they are encountering uh, problems uh, within the assemblies of state parties because of two con uh, three countries, uh, specifically is Britain, America, and then you can add their France. That's, that's, that's the, the general uh, feeling, because they, th they think that if Britain tomorrow threw its weight behind Kenya, all these things would disappear. Just like in Côte d'Ivoire and uh, other French countries, they think if France basically supported this particular person, th that's what's giving uh, rise of wearing this idea of uh, neo-coronial, because they believe that these people have very, very strong power behind the throne and they can change. So the, for Britain to appear to be championing uh, that thing, it seems that this is how we want it done. Uh, I think diplomatically, uh, what Britain I is doing is essentially the same that Kenya was pursuing, as you have pointed out. But uh, I think they should have been more tactical. That should have been perhaps been pushed by Belgium, maybe by France, or any other countries, because do not have brought this suspicion. Uh, because in, it was seen as a way of defeating the motion at the UN Security Council. Mm -hmm. that, that's really the context. Okay, and before we move <coughs> on to the diplomatic implications mm -hmm. of the situation at the moment, I just want to go back to uh, what you had said earlier in terms of it being fairly mm -hmm. unlikely uh, mm -hmm. that the Rome Statute will be amended to shield hitting st sitting steads of state, heads of state. So in the event that that isn't approved, where does this leave the administration in their efforts to avoid Uhuru and, uh, and Ruto from attending trial? What's next? Mm. Well, the, the what's next is actually the big question, and I wouldn't uh, hazard to, to say what it is that they're going to do. What I can say with certainty is that the resistance, uh, quote-unquote, is going to continue. 
the forms it, is, it might take are going to vary depending on what forums or platforms are available. Uh, uh, Morgan, if you, if you begin to think about what has been happening since uh, the 15th of December uh, 2010, when uh, the six Kenyans were indicted, it's a very, it's a two-pronged uh, kind of a, an approach, uh, which, I would, which I normally prefer to call the strategic non-compliance. Strategic non-compliance because you want to comply, uh, you don't want to comply, but you cannot, it cannot come out that way because it will mean warrants of arrests and all these other things and threat uh, co confrontation. So what has happened is that you have pursued the legal path. You attend, you postpone, and you, you move on like that. And on this other hand, you up the political game uh, through the East African community, through IGAD where possible, through the African Union, and uh, back to the United Nations. Uh, just to ensure that this, this does not go on, uh, or if it goes on, it occurs within the Kenyan jurisdiction, not the international jurisdiction. I think after this, uh, that strategic non-compliance will have to end. And a clear, a clear distinction will have to be made, whether you're going to be compliant to the legal pillar. You, you, you go, you attend, whether it is through video link or physical, it is simply means there has to be compliance with the law. Or two, you choose the path of non-compliance and then uh, automatically uh, the ICC will declare Kenya or Kenyan uh, leaders fugitives. Uh, after that, maybe the, the rest is politics. Uh, the trial itself, going to the Hague, has only two outcomes. You are either acquitted or you are uh, convicted. A conviction will mean <laughs> you don't have, uh, it's no longer a fugitive. This is a, 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 co a committed criminal. That's, that's what it means. And the consequences politically are, are, are predictable. First, you've got to step aside, not even step aside. You have to sub submit yourself to the authorities and, 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 and serve your sentence. And for Kenya, you have for necessity to have an election, a by-election, or to fill the positions. Uh, so there are quite a number of scenarios you can look at it. But uh, I think the immediate uh, com impact of the ASP uh, outcome is that that distinction will now have to come out clear. You are either pursuing the law or you are either non-complying. Uh, so the strategic non-compliance will begin to, to appear uh, untenable anymore. If uh, the video link is allowed, mm -hmm. what's, the, what's, the, what's the difference? Whether you are there or not there, like you said. The, the, the difference is that uh, those of us in Kenya who expect services uh, from the Jubilee yes. government will get the services. In fact, that's the whole idea about the video link, to, to, to respond to the argument that, uh, uh, which was made by the African Union uh, that the indictment and trials uh, by the ICC, which demand that the two heads, the two uh, leaders, uh, Kenyan leaders, uh, are physically present in the, at the Hague, is going to basically uh, prevent them from executing their constitutional duties, and by extension, unable to serve the people of Kenya, who are the sovereign. And that way, it, to me, it was a very, very good ground for non-compliance without being taken as a, a fugitive because you, you cannot be a fugitive if you have a legal uh, responsibility to do. Uh, so that, to me, was a very, very good ground for non-compliance. And, uh, and that is being understood now by the ICC, which w is why they're yielding so many grounds. You, you, you defer the case. Uh, you can allow the deputy president to come in when there is necessity for this or that, as long as the president is not within the country. The, the vice president must be within the country. Uh, so that is a ground that has won that Kenyans have the right to get the services from the two, uh, the deputy, the head and the deputy. And two, that they, both of them, have constitutional duty because they are democratically elected. And that it's itself is causing a dilemma to the ICC. But at the same time, uh, the coming in of the video link will mean that they are within the country they can listen to 
they may not necessarily have to answer questions. So they'll be able to, to serve uh, the country. Of course, economically, it's going to save Kenya a lot of money because you don't have to have your head of state uh, you know, uh, outside there. And you know what uh, a presidential visit outside a country means. In, in America, for Obama to leave America, for example, when he came to Africa the other time, to cost about some hundred million dollars just coming in. So it's very expensive for Kenya as a small country even to be tried at the Hague. Already you can see when the vice president, the deputy president is coming to the country after the Hague, you can see a, a fatigued person, a person who is really weighed down by that situation. And that kind of a person cannot give services to the Kenyans. So that's the, really uh, where the argument lies. If uh, that the video link is done, does that mean the president may not be able to consult the lawyer because the lawyer may be at the age and he himself will be here or the lawyer and the president will be here, the video. What, what, what the technical word, what does that mean? Uh, but I'm taking where we have reached in terms of the technology for those who are uh, techno technologically yeah. solved. Yeah. <laughs> you can it, do it. Not just doing it. A room is like yeah, next yeah, to yourself. It's yeah. like you can greet the person at the, yeah. at, at the Hague. Okay. A technology, I mean, these days, you can even upload the entire of the data in the Republic in one uh, Dropbox, and, and, and it is there. Any document can reach the next destination within seconds, not hours, within seconds. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I don't think, the, the not just a video link, I think the language used by the United Nations was not a video link. It is basically a technology. That, that uh, video technology or that kind of related technology because it's, it's a whole uh, you know a gamut of uh, technological uh, support uh, the young people are using something called whatsapp and mm, yeah. you know with that you can send a huge photograph which you could not approve yeah. through any other uh, email yeah. or yeah. other system uh, and, and so on and so forth so uh, I, it, it, it doesn't make a difference to me. The only difference it makes in, in a huge way is that Kenyans will get their services and Kenyans will be able to have their head of state and the deputy head of state tried within the Kenyan jurisdiction and the, the ICC will be satisfied that it is trying, uh, you know, it is pursuing its uh, mandate according to the Rome statutes. So it's, it's, it's a bridgeway. The consequences, however, are very different. The consequences are real. Uh, it is either acquittal or conviction. And each of them has consequences for Kenya. If it is conviction, then the process now changes because you cannot be convicted through the video. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's a little bit, bit different. And, and I think Kenyans need to begin preparing for, for, for those uh, two scenarios. Mm -hmm. if, if there is that compliance with the law, uh, we have to, have to begin thinking ahead of time. Uh, part of the problem uh, we are encountering uh, in all these forums, whether it is the African Union, whether it's the